Hello there everybody. Yeah. It's been a while since I've done one of these movie review vlogs. Um there's a reason for that. Um Um you know, I never really conceived them as like an, excuse me, as a regular sort of a thing. I started doing them as fill-ins and well, basically, I start, realized that, you know, I look back on some, several of the ones I did, it's, they weren't really very, all that great. You know, it's, I think, and the, the reason for that is because basically my summation of them was kind of, eh, or, yeah, screw, you know, it, it, it was kind of casual, and casualness it doesn't really make for the greatest of videos. You need to have, you know, passion for what you're saying, or it doesn't... So, basically, I have made it a point f from now on that I'm only going to review something if I actually have an opinion about it that I, you know, that's worth talking about, rather than just, eh. So, um... <coughs> So this time, as you saw above, um, I am, I just saw the new Wonder Woman movie. Um, uh, you know, that's exciting. I've been looking forward to it for a little while. Um, although, I should clarify, like I did with the, with the Ghostbusters, remember I said I'm not a huge fan? Well, I'm not like... I'm not a giant Wonder Woman fan either. I'm not like, um, so I, I'm not like one of these people who have been, you know, waiting for years and years and years and years and years. Like, oh, it's finally coming! Oh, you know, no. But I have, you know, I I, I have a, my, an appreciation for the character. I've been getting into her a bit more lately, um, and certainly, you know, I've been thinking for years, like, well, why, why don't we have a Wonder Woman movie? We've got lots of Batman, Batman movies and Superman movies, and why, why not a book? So it's finally here, and regardless of the end result, even if it were a piece of, bleh, at least it being there would be a good thing. But it's not, but it, anyway, anyway, I should... Uh, let's just get started the um, traditional way. I'll do a brief pre of the plot. Um, as is usually the the case with the Wonder Woman mythos, it's based on, you know, Wonder Woman is Princess Diana of Themyscira, Themyscira um, Paradise Island, um, and she lives, she lives there as, as you know, Princess of the Amazons, um, in on her magic hidden island in the middle of the ocean um and well you know who the amazons are probably if you're watching this anyway so and then one day a pilot crashes on the island and it's Steve Trevor, who, and here's where it changes a little bit, because normally, you know, the, the Wonder Woman was created during World War Two, and so is normally, you know, it's, it's the initial thing were set during World War Two, and and so Army pilot Steve Trevor was to, was you know fighting the Nazis, and that's what blah, 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 all that. Well, this time. Um, uh, it's set during World War One, which is a little bit of a strange creative, but I'll, I'll get into that later. The The point being, uh, he crashes on the island, and, uh, it's a little more elaborate than the usual setup, but... I'll let you discover that for yourselves. Um, and he talks about, you know, 
oh, it's it's the this great big horrible war is going on out there, and the Amazons, you know, role is to bring peace to the world, to you know, blah, 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 to do all that sort of stuff that they, you know, they're they're supposed to help usher in mankind to a new, um, to a better way of living, and bring, hopefully, bring an end to, to war and so forth in the process. And so, Diana says, well, hang on a second. This is this is a sign. This is this is our purpose. We're talking about here. This is the the biggest war ever. Clearly, the you know it must be being masterminded by Ares, the god of war, our our arch enemy, and and so we have to go out and take care of him, and that will, you know, that will end the war, as as we're supposed to do. But her mom, Hippolyta, Queen of the Amazon, says, no, we, we don't know if we can trust, we don't know if, if we can trust this, this guy who just, out of nowhere, we're not going anywhere. But, you know, of course, Diana does go with him to try and end the war, and, well, she spends the rest of the movie. That's, that's the basics of the story. Uh, so, before I get into a, you know, a direct review, um, I just take care of a few little, like, nerdy little details first. Um, I'm, and th this first one is actually kind of, it's not really a spot, it's kind of, kind of like the movie, one of those spoilers that the movie itself, or it's one of those, those details that the movie itself treats as spoilers, but if you've actually been paying any sort of attention to the the, the current comics or even the anything it's it's really not it's it's not it it barely qualifies as it, it in in the kind of the, the way it's finally revealed is uh Diana is not um made from from clay by her her mom and invested with life she's the daughter of Zeus which is the current sort of retcon thing in the comics. So because of that reason, it's understandable that they kept that in, but I was really hoping that they wouldn't, because, frankly, I hate that that detail. That, that It takes away so much of, of her originality, you know? I mean, I mean... That's part of her creation myth, and 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 she's all about the myths. She she's Wonder Woman, you know. She 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 comes from this magic island, and her her origins are all tied in with the Greek gods, and she, you know, it, she's all about myths. It makes perfect sense that her uh, origin, uh, you know, should be a sort of creation myth instead of just, you know, oh, well, I'm the daughter of Zeus. I mean, yeah, that that is, is mythical in and of itself, but it's... Uh, excuse me. Also, um, they did one thing I didn't really like, which is... Um, they... Uh, the, the the gods in this movie, the the, the Greek gods, um, in this movie, the, the 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 big bad guy is Ares, right? You know, he's 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 the, he's the god of war, um, and I won't 
talk about how he's treated because it kind of constitutes spoilers and it's uh, yeah but basically the, the the setup for his character is that um Zeus created mankind you know and uh which is not a very accurate treatment of Greek mythology I don't think I'm pretty sure it was someone, or maybe it was, oh, whatever, I'd have to check, but I don't think it was just Zeus that, no, in fact, it may have been, no, it was, oh, no, either it's Prometheus, or whatever, I'm not going to get into a lecture in Greek myths, I think it was a bit more complicated than that, however, I've got to stop thinking sometimes. However, the point is, in this movie, Zeus created the human beings, and Ares, god of war, uh, didn't like that, so he, he initiated a war, was basically him against the rest of the gods, and he won. Um, and either he he killed Zeus, or he and Zeus were the only survivors. And I don't like this. It it really it kind of takes away from. I mean, in in the original comics, admittedly, there's it was also kind of a uh, there there the setup was that there were the, also two gods instead of the, the, the full sort of pantheon. But there it was more of a... There it was... Uh, the two gods were Aphrodite and Mars. Or, you know, should should be really be Ares, but it was Mars. In the Golden Age, it was Aphrodite and Mars. And that, you know, if you've got to do away with the full pantheon, that's the sort of thing that makes sense. It's like... Aphrodite, goddess of love. Of course, she's the the Amazon's patroness, and Mars or Ares is the the big bad dude who's you know he's behind in the comics. Of course, he's behind the the the, the Nazis and like we you know war war we like war and the you know Amazon like no we don't like war. It, it, it makes it, but here it's like. And, hmm, it's a little off-putting, because I'm not trying to, I, I, I'm not generally one of those people, I know, I know that Wonder Woman is like a feminist icon and was created as such, but I, I tend to, to look at her from a more sort of a general sort of point of view, because I don't think she, she only has to be treated like that, I think she's a much, a, a, a much more complex character, or has grown to become so, um, but that being said, it's taking goddesses out of her backstory entirely, that's a little iffy. I mean, even when the, the, even when the things were changed after the crisis, um, to where there's like the full pantheon, the the they they worshipped all the gods, but the the ones who were their specific patrons were the goddesses. It wasn't just Aphrodite anymore. Was, I think it was her and Athena and and Demeter. Well, yeah, it was a bunch of goddesses and Hermes, um, which you know, fine. Um, and then you know after the 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 re retcon which introduced the whole you know Zeus's daughter business even then there were freaking goddesses involved with the amazons and taking them out of the mythology entirely i don't like that 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 strikes me as very um There's something wrong about it. It's like... This Wonder Woman is not so much about... Is not so much about... Uh, 
champion championing the, the the cause of women as she is uh, the cause of peace or of uh, you know bringing an end to war and so on and so forth. And I like that, but it's still the the, the whole women men thing is still there and reducing it to where the the cosmology to where women aren't involved at all in the creation of this entirely female race, in fact, aren't even mentioned, it's... That's... Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say that the the studio was being ultra-paranoid about, you know, oh, well, you know, we're gonna get the, 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 the people who don't like, you know, who don't like feminist sort of stuff Shaking their fists like, yeah, this is feminist propaganda. And blah, 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 blah. So let's just take women. Just, just let's just get rid of all that aspect of things. And this is, yeah. Or, you know, it's alternately, it's the people who aren't, uh, aren't happy with polytheism, and so they, they. They, oh, well, you know, there used to be lots of gods, but not anymore. It, that's that's the sort of thing where, you know, over in Marvel, they, they've reduced the the Asgardians to, you know, oh, well, people think they're gods, but, but they're not really gods, because, you know, yeah, no, we, we, we wouldn't want to annoy the Christians and uh, the other uh, the monotheistic people, would we? <laughs> Please watch our movies, still. You know, it's like, ugh. I, 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 I really hate it when people pander like that. But anyway, that's just, that's just a, a, a supposition. And, and I've spoken too long about that. Anyway, and enough about the cosmology. Um, also, I'm not why I'm s still, this, this is, again, a, a gripe I have to have to, you know, with, with the comics as well, but I'm not wild about the fact that Wonder Woman so prominently has a shield and sword in this version of things. It's, 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 Really, this has only started happening in the, like, the past few years, as best I can tell, and it's really not how Wonder Woman should be. I mean, I have, you know, I have no problem with her in general doing that sort of thing, but only in, like, the direst of emergencies. It's like, I think, in fact, she may have first done it in Kingdom Come, the comic Kingdom Come, where... It was this freaking battle between the su between the superheroes and like an apocalyptic event, and then she puts on the you know the the, the eagle armor and and starts wielding the, the the sword and so forth. There it makes sense. Here it's like I don't know. I don't I I don't particularly like it. It's not as big of a deal as. It could be, um, and she it's she she doesn't do that sort of thing throughout the whole movie. But it, I wish I wish that were different. And I still, you know, like I said in the, my Batman v Superman thing, I still wish her comic was her costume was a bit closer to the the original version in terms of, uh, in terms of, like, the brightness of the colors and the overall design, it's, I can't help it. I'm, you know, I, I like old comics, I like the co my colors to pop and the designs to be bright and shiny, but, whatever. Um, I have a few, but, th th that's the nerdy stuff. Let's get into to the movie itself. How was it? It was pretty good. Actually, it was mostly pretty good. I those those issues are not tiny that I just talked about. They 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 were ones that kind of. Hmm. But as a movie in and of itself, it was good. I I still like Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. She was just about everybody agrees she was the best thing about Batman v Superman, and she's 
she she makes for a, a very good Wonder Woman. She she she's kind of because this is like her just starting out. Um, she's kind of a mixture of uh, an innocent and a, and a seasoned warrior because you know she she's you know she she's trained as a warrior for years before she ever leaves the island and she's the princess so she's you know she's been tutored by the best and she knows a whole bunch of languages and so so she so she's she's no fool but at the same time she's never been off the Masira before so of course she's like what is this what is this stuff what's going on you know cars what's what's this car business and why don't the women carry swords and you know it's like um it's, it's she's she's got a bit of a fish out fish out of water quality to her at first um but she's good she's she's very convincing as the character and she she looks the part she's very good with the the stunts and so forth. She's she's believable as someone who could whoop yo butt um, at this well at the same time being you know kind of she she she's good she's good and Chris Pine I believe it's Chris Pine is also good as uh, as Steve Trevor um, he's a bit um. He's a bit less kind of all-American boy this time around. He's, the, you know, the character is often kind of treated as like this square-jawed sort of army dude who, you know, gosh darn Wonder Woman, you've just got to help us beat those filthy Nazis, you know. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, of course, but basically... Yeah, all American boy. He's not quite that. He's not quite like that this time. He because he's he's a bit more involved in, um, well, the nitty gritty of the war, shall we say? He's not just a soldier. He's a he's an infiltration sort of behind the behind the, the you know behind the scenes, I guess, sort of guy, and. Um, so, he's a little more world-weary, a little more... He's seen the cost of war, which which works well for, for you know, his place within the story. That's, um, and uh, they've got Etta Candy. <laughs> they've got Etta Candy in this version, which I'm, you know, that's pretty cool. I think actually they've had some version of her in in every adaptation so far. I could be wrong about that, but this one is is closer to is 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 a bit closer to the original sort of golden age version a little bit. She's excuse me. She's not like a feisty college girl in this this one. She's Steve's secretary and she's British. Um which actually, it, Etta, come to think of it, Etta Candy actually does sound, make much more sense as a British name. I mean, Etta, i pretty sure is a is or used to be a, a relatively prominent sort of British fe girl's female woman's name, um, and Candy. I've, I've, I there's, I've actually. What is it? Um, the, the rise and fall of I don't know, the, or the life and death of Colonel Blimp. I think is is if you if you have any of you seen that movie, it's a good movie, good old movie. Um, but that the the main character in that is is I think like current something something like whatever his first name is. Candy, you know, it's it's a, and it's not treated as an unusual name there. It's just it's a, it's a British lad. So it 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 actually, it weirdly makes sense for her to be British. 
I'm not. I'm not sure. I would have. It's a detail I myself would have put in, but it's. And I'm probably overthinking, overthinking the whole matter. But it's like, you know, I just I noticed that, um, and it's the the film overall is good. It, the film overall is basically it's a war film with Wonder Woman in it, and um, that that works. But I mean, you know, Wonder Woman was originally a wartime character. She was, you know, that's why she had an eagle on her chest and then the the stars on the, you know, as if she was, you know, she's supposed to look patriotic. She was a patriotic wartime character, even though, you know, she wasn't strictly speaking representing America. She was representing the good guys, but you know what I mean. Um, so it makes sense for, for, for her first appearance to be a World War One, or well, to be, to be in a World War, I should say it was in World War One. But uh. um, yeah, and I don't, I would have put it in World War Two, just because that's that's, you know, when she first came yeah, out, but. But World War One does make sense because, in terms of the sort of story they're doing, because it was one of the most morally confused wars in history. I mean, it was basically, you know, the, the, it, it only came about because of this piling on of all these various different treaties and so forth. They said, well, okay, because of this, because this happened, um... We're all going to attack each other, and none of the the nobody really understood why, except the generals, and even they were a little, or such is my understanding. But anyway, so it's if you want to do a film about the folly of war, World War One is actually a pretty good one, and I'm I frankly think we should there should be more films about it. We we've done way too much stuff about World War Two. Yes, I know World World War Two is a good is, you know, makes for good material, and heck, I was just saying, you know, put Wonder Woman in World War II, but speaking generally, I, I would, I'm, I find World War I movies much more interesting, but, yeah, so it, it works, you know, putting Wonder Woman in that sort of situation works, there's, there's some awesome scenes, um, there's really only two major sort of fight scenes with her in the in the whole movie uh there's that one and at the end and I'll get to that but but the the the, the former you know is is she's on the on the battlefield or more or less yeah she she she's in the thick of things you know deflecting Bullets and jumping up to, you know, wallop snipers and, like, throwing stuff across, you know, picking up, like, I think she, like, at one point she, she goes into a room and she, like, picks up a desk and, like, and, you know, smashes the soldier against the wall. It's like, you know, she's, that's awesome. It's all, it's all very well shot. It's all well done. Um... And there, you know, there's this kind of ragtag crew team of behind the li fellow Steve's fellow behind the lines guys who are helping her out, and it's it's well shot, and it's 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 good. It's a very good synthesis of like uh, a, a World War One battle, you know, and and, uh, and and superhero stuff. I that's it that's very well done. I like that a lot. I've always kind of had sort of a soft spot for like sort of the the superhero version of history. Like, you know, what what actual history is like when superheroes actually start getting involved. And this is that directly. So it 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 kind of it it tickled my happy buttons. <laughs> um and uh yeah, and uh, oh, um, the villain. Well, the main villain is Ares, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about him because that's you discover that for yourself. But one of the other villains 
is uh, actually was actually a pleasant surprise for me. It's Doctor Poison, who is I was expecting I was expecting one of the bigger ones. Um, I mean, I know Ares is big, but I was expecting like uh, I mean, I, I guess I wasn't expecting like the cheetah or something. But I was thinking maybe like you know, Baroness Paula von Gunther, or somebody like that. Um, but no, we, we got Dr. Poison. We're like, wow, we actually got a fairly, a, a relatively obscure Wonder Woman villain in a, in a more or less main uh, antagonist role. That's kind of cool. You know, these people have done their homework. And I, I don't know who plays her. I don't remember who plays her, but she's... She's kind of cool. She she's not. Uh, she doesn't get a lot of screen time, but she's she's like this creepy wartime scientist who has a. Uh, I don't know if I, any of you have ever seen like those sort of soldiers who got their faces messed up by like shrapnel or whatever, and wore like a realistic sort of mask of their old face to cover it. She's got something a bit like that, and it's kind of creepy looking, um, and. Yeah, she, she's not the, the greatest villain in the world, but she's memorable. Um, so all that's good. But, unfortunately, one thing I do have to say in, that's not in this movie's favor is the ending. You may recall uh, in my Bats v. Soups review, um, I talked about how the ending in that, I hated the ending in that. I didn't like any of that movie, really, but... Well, no, I, mean, I liked little bits and pieces, but... Um, but the ending there was horrible. It was just one big blur of chaotic sound and fury indicating nothing, you know. And, well, I mean, that was a Zack Snyder film, and this is not... But I'm pretty sure he's had his hand in it somewhere because he's, he's, you know, he's doing stuff behind the scenes with all this. And you can really tell it at the ending. The, 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 most of the rest of the movie is, 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 you know, you can barely tell it's even part of the same series as, as Batman v. Supes. It's, it's very much... But the ending is just, there's, all of a sudden, it's like the movie s saved most of its special effects budget for maybe a, a stretch of maybe ten minutes, if, if that, and it packs it all in, and it's just, and it's just, you know, everything's happening at once, and there's Slow-mo and there's huge explosions and the it's it's it, it's an overload. It's like you know shouting and blah, 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 blah. it's like I honestly I might not have minded it so much if the rest of the movie had been like that, you know, because at least I'd be used to it by that point. Um, I mean, I didn't like it in in Batman v Superman, not at all, but at least it was consistent with the rest of the movie. Here, most of the rest of the movie is actually fairly... Uh, it, it's a little conservative about its use of that sort of thing, and that works, because it's all supposed to be about, you know, just Wonder Woman fighting people, you know, or, or not fighting people, or... You know, it's, the focus is just supposed to be squarely on her, not about Pow! And then all of a sudden we get Pow! It's it's like I honestly it's whiplash. It's 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 like a you know, all of a sudden you're going oh, you know, after a, a, most of the rest of the movie not doing that, and it's 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 it cost 
catches you severely off guard, and it's really not needed. And it's very Snyderish that way. And it's like, it's really a shame because I I left the theater kind of you you know that kind of feeling where you're just you're just escaping a headache by the skin of your teeth and it's like if anything anything um sets you off somehow you're going to get it that's that's what I what happened to me when I left the theater I didn't get a headache but I basically was kind of mm -hmm. would you know, I was like, Duh. oh, oh, I hope I'm not gonna get it. And it was, I was like that till I got home, you know. You know, I'd probably still be, if I hadn't, you know, taken a shower and freshened up. But the point is, that's what the ending did to me. And I, I am a bit sensitive to that sort of thing. So I don't expect everybody is going to react that way. Of course not. But, um, uh, also, oh, this is, this is maybe a minor point, but when Diana leaves Themyscira, it's not made at all clear whether she can return or not. It's like, you know, I think someone says something along the lines of, you know, you, you may never come back. And it's, it's very... The way it's done, it's very unclear as to whether they mean, um, oh, well, you can never come back ever because now you are banished, you, you, you know, or you realize you're going into an insanely dangerous situation and you might get killed. Um, I, and the movie is very ambiguous because it never shows her returning. And I don't like that. It's like the the Amazons feature very prominently in the first part of the movie and then they 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 go away. Um I don't I'm not wild about that aspect of things because that's one again that's one of the things that has always kind of defined Wonder Woman as a character is she's not like she's not like Superman who's, you know, his home blew up and he can never he can never see it again. You know, there's no getting back Krypton. No, Wonder Woman. You know, she, she, her her home is remote and um, all that, but it's still she can she can go back and and you know have a heart to heart with her mom whenever she wants to, and she, you know she has old old childhood friends and so forth. And it's it's her culture that she's. He's spreading, not just, you know, oh, well, I'm going to do spread peace and everything because it's, it's, I feel like that's the right, right thing to do. No, she's doing it because it's, it's her, part of her people's mission. She's like a, a, a cultural missionary for good and, good and light and peace and love and all that sort of stuff. And if she can't go back to her, her, her island... That's not... That kind of sinks the whole deal, doesn't it? But, right. That being said, those... those it, it's, not, it's not a perfect movie. And frankly, I think... I've heard that there has been getting a lot of good press, and I think that some of that may be simply because, oh, thank the God. Gods, here's finally one that doesn't suck! You know? I mean, let's face it. Batman v Superman sucked. The Man of Steel... I mean, I wasn't quite as hard on it as some other people, but still, it sucked. As a Superman movie, it sucked. Super Suicide Squad? I actually didn't mind it, but still, for a lot of people, it sucked. So, and finally, here comes along a movie that doesn't suck. And so everybody, yeah! You know? Um, it's like, you know, when the Horton Hears a Who movie came out. You remember that one? And everybody praised it to the sky because, oh, finally, after this, this Seuss movie and that Seuss movie and all these, these other Seuss movies that we've tried that 
dink like rotten diplodocus eggs, all of a sudden, you know, we got one that's semi-decent. So it's I think it may be the same thing here. Which is not that I'm saying, you know, oh, well, you know, this one sucks too. It doesn't. It's good. Most of it is is perfectly fine. But it's not it's not perfect. And it, it does have th some things wrong with it, but issues that at least I had with it. Um, so I'm not going to say, oh, 10 out of 10. But it is good. I do recommend it. I do at least recommend giving it a look. Um, and quite possibly, the, these issues I had have with it, you won't have at all. It's, it's, I mean, a lot of people seem to like it. It can't all just be from comparing and contrasting with the others. Um, and, 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 and that's another good, good thing, is that it doesn't, we, we, it's not, uh, sequel baiting or, or trying to super tie in with the others. It's very much its own thing. There's like a very brief mention of, of Bruce Wayne at one point, you know, says, oh, yeah, Batman's still out there somewhere, don't forget the list, just leave, blah, blah, blah. But, but, but that's like, you know, blink and you'll miss it. Um, on the whole, I do, I do recommend this movie. It's not a perfect Wonder Woman movie by any means. There are certainly some things I would have done differently, um, and some things I would have changed, but under the the circumstances, it's probably either the best we could have hoped for, or, you know, it could have been a lot worse. And I am, I am certainly not going to turn up my nose at the, 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 the end results, simply because it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it's good. Um... I dearly hope that one of these days, we now that the, you know, the floodgates have been opened, we will get a Wonder Woman movie that is everything I would have liked it to be, or at least comes closer. But, this is what we got. And, it ain't bad. It ain't bad. I enjoyed it up until the ending, and, you know, even... Maybe if I saw it again, now knowing what the ending was going to be, the end, it I wouldn't get the <laughs> sort of sort of effect as bad as I did here. But um, it's, so it's it's yeah yeah. You should see it. You 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 probably will see it. I'm sure whether or not I recommend it to you. Um, and so yeah, Wonder Woman. Decent stuff. Not bad. Good performances. Overall, very well directed, you know, ending aside. Issues here and there, you know, nerdy stuff, but overall, good movie. Could have been, could have been a lot worse. So yeah, that's my, uh, I think I went, I went a bit long again, but that's my review of the Wonder Woman movie. Um, so... I shall sign off now. Um, hopefully there should be some more sort of regular sorts of, of videos in the reasonably near future. Um, I, I think I am going to, I'm getting a bit better with, with that. I, I got some, I got some stuff in the works. So, you can look forward to that if you want. <laughs> I hope you do. Anyway, review's over. See ya!